Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Yet another video on launch day. I'm actually filming this on launch day as well, although I did the last one as well. It's crazy times. But this one is for the MSI Z790 Ace Max. But just a little one for you. The Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi preview is also live on the website. As for the website, brand new website, works lovely on your phone now different layout, much cleaner. We hope you like it. I would definitely like your comments about the new website underneath. Please, if you may. Also, if you enjoy this video, like, subscribe, comment, um, and do all of the things because lots of work and testing has gone into all of the videos and the boards that we have tested in time for launch. Now, the MSI Z790 Ace Max because it's after launch, it literally is after launch, that's when I'm filming it. Very last minute, but it's because we've had so much to do and there has been some delays. Not MSI's fault this time, thank you MSI, you were spot on. Um, but £549 this board is going to be, and I've just got that price plucked straight from the SCAN website. I can also confirm 24 plus 1 plus 2 105 amp SPS uh, power array setup. No mention of teaming, no mention of mirroring, no mention of any mumbo jumbo like that. Just 24 phases for the CPU, properly done, properly wired, properly bonkers mental. Now the box is here, the box is empty because I have it all out already. We will look at the CPU, but I want, this is one of the few ones where there's actually stuff in the box. So Wi-Fi antenna, you also get a USB with your drivers and everything on, which is nice. We're not seeing CDs so much now. Um, then you've got a sticker pack. I'm trying to do this all one-handed and failing. Uh, you get a sticky pack, but it does mean you get some stuff for your cables as well as uh, battery covers, badges. I wish they, rather than the battery, I wish they'd given that some for fans as well. Uh, but there are little mini luckies. I love the little luckies. Look at those. They're so cute. Anyway, so you get uh, some cables for the Thunderbolt pass-through, which go to Mini DisplayPort. That's very cool. We'll talk about more about that in a minute. You get uh, an extension uh, for RGB, but it's also a fan out, so it's one to two. Now that's uh, for the normal four-pin um, RGB. There's also a front panel cable, which is very cool. Um, and that's front panel for your case, goes onto the motherboard. There is uh, an extension cable for addressable RGB. There's thermal probes in there, some screws, a couple of SATA cables, which you don't see much nowadays. But the, and actually, that is the only board I've seen in the last week with SATA cables in the box. So uh, fair play to MSI for that. Now, the board itself. Straight away, it's big. XL ATX. There's a little bit of extra width there. Now, a lot of people will instantly start asking, will it fit my case? If you think about it, it's just that little bit wider. Look at your case and it might cover up one of the grommets for your 24 pin cable and stuff. Some have two lots of grommets. Some might have to come in from a different place. But that's the only thing that you've got to think about is where your grommets are and where they're going to get passed through. Um, your front panel, USB-C here, this six pin connector is for that so that you can have the uh, better charging. Now up in this corner, you can see there's no eight pins for the CPU power. It's just not there. In fact, I'm gonna zoom you in so I can show you better or worse in my case. Um, so the eight pins just are not there. They're further over on the board over here. Now you can also tell that they are solid pins there you go, solid pins in there. And then because the eight pin powers over here, that does mean everything else gets pushed out. So you've got one CPU fan header just there, and then you get the uh, sort of like a pump header and then system fan number one there. So there's not masses of it up, the top, up around this section. And as we come down, 24 pin, your six pin for the charging, you got uh, a couple of USB 3 external, six SATAs, and then down in the bottom corner, power reset, two USBs, LED switch, BIOS switch, 
couple of thermal probes and then one, two, three, four, four, five, six fan headers on the bottom. So they're right out of the way. Uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting one if your case fan um, doesn't reach round to here or something, but you know, whatever. Uh, there are four NVMEs underneath. There's a, um, and they're PCR Express 4. There's an NVMe underneath this, which is PCR Express 5. I did say about 24 power phases, and you can see they're all crammed in around there. Now, the heat sink at the top is a very old school multi fin design, but they've done it black with a nice brushed aluminium top. That is lovely. This heat sink underneath here is enormous and solid aluminium. Again, it's not a small heat sink back there. There is a bit of um, plastic because this lights up, but the majority of it is aluminium. And like I said, this does light up and then this lights up down here as well. It actually looks really nice. I'm, I'm digging this kind of Aztec feel to it. Uh, this section up here doesn't actually touch anything. It is just there to look pretty. See, it's just, there's nothing there. Don't forget where you're meant to be looking, but there's nothing under there. It's not actually connected to anything. It's just screwed on. Um, this is making me want to paint things and all kinds of stuff. Uh, around the back, so. Smart button, you can set that yourself. Then you've got BIOS flash, you've got BIOS clear, USB-Cs, BIOS flash header, two 2.5 inch uh, gigabit, 2.5 inch, 2.5 gigabit ethernets. Um, 10G uh, SATAs, I really, I've done too many of these. I do apologize, 10G USBs. Then we've got the uh, Thunderbolt section here and the mini display ports are through for the pass through. You can use these for charging and stuff as well if you want. Wi-Fi 7 and then gold um, pickups for your audio there. Plus you've got an optical output, which again, you're not seeing so much anymore. Um, you can see some of the audio grade capacitors there. MSI have thrown a lot at the board. Now, as we zoom back out, we can talk about performance. One of the things that I will say, and this goes for every single one of the boards, and they've all been tested, I have been undervolting the 14900K from the stock volts. The Intel reference volts is put in the 14900K at about 1.4 volts. My one specifically, I've been able to easily get it benchmark stable for everything at 1.3. So I am going to be doing uh, undervolting guides for Gigabyte, MSI and Asus so that the BIOSes are all familiar. Haven't had time for launch, but on the Tomahawk, when I build that for the review, there will be an MSI underclocking video for that. When I say about cooling as well, I did say uh, that it's hot and you are going to need a 360 millimeter AIO if you want to run this at stock clocks. So even if you undervolt it, you're gonna need a big AIO. I wouldn't want one of the i9s under an air cooler because as soon as you do multi-threaded stuff, it's just going to have to blow a hooli to be able to stop it from hitting 100 degrees. If you think about it, uh, I used a H170 for my testing and uh, I was hitting 100 degrees with uh, uh, everything on auto, even with the H170 on maximum fan output. I still had to uh, undervolt it to get it to 80-ish degrees, depending on the board. Now, I will say that the MSI boards, uh, it's going to be uh, settings within the BIOS um, and I probably will need to be able to go and tune it in, but they were sort of about five to six degrees warmer CPU temp wise than the other boards were, um, but that will be the subsidiary volts. Uh, so all of the supporting volts, they've obviously, um, they're running slightly warmer. Um, it's, it's not a surprise, but it might get tuned down. I know the MSI BIOS team uh, are normally so on this, but the performance that they got out from it was definitely not um, 
shaming them at all. I'm just picking up on the small things that I can do to tell between them. The performance between the boards with the same processors is incredibly close. What you need to remember that we're doing is effectively just undervolting the processor, letting the boost and everything do what it wants to do um, because there's just not enough headroom for overclocking a processor with the lid on. Now I have to use the same processor for every single one of the reviews and it's just too early for me to start cracking the lid on it, doing um, um, direct die stuff and also with uh, liquid metal constant in and out it's just it, it doesn't bode well um, so uh, I'd have even if I did D-lid I'm going to be having to use normal thermal paste and stuff like that so it's just at the moment it's just not, I can't do it this board really with everything that it brings to the table uh, is running an i9 at stock it's not stressing it at all you do really need sort of either sub-zero, direct eye, um, even um, a proper dedicated water-cooled system is still going to be held back by the temperatures that you're going to get with the standard die on the processor. So um, performance has been admirable, great layout, great aesthetics. Uh, the VRMs are just, you could say it's overkill, but you know, longevity, clean power, not going to have to be worried, not going to be getting hot. VRMs were just ridiculously good temperatures, which with that you'd kind of expect it. They have done incredibly well. It's also nice to see a very nice um, board from MSI that isn't the Godlike, because obviously the difference between the price on this and the Godlike is hundreds. It's good competition for the Dark Hero and for the Master X from Gigabyte, they're all about the same sort of thing. And if you have a brand preference from MSI, it is not going to let you down. But for now, at least, this is the tiniest one, trying to get as many of these done as he is humanly possible, as he can do before he goes nuts. Yeah, was I gonna say out? Ding! Love you, sis.